this is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. The purpose of this video is to instruct new technical divers in some basic technical diving calculations that they will encounter. If you are already an accomplished technical diver, you will probably find this video boring. Having said that, these will be the types of calculations that we'll be discussing in this video. The first calculation involves the MOD for gas blends. Here, what we're specifically looking for is what is the maximum operating depth for a particular breathing gas that has a given fraction of oxygen. Here we actually have two different types of calculations. The first one is for determining the maximum operating depth uh, in a working condition, which means um, you're at the bottom or you're ascending to your first deco stop. And we'll use 1.4 ATA for that. And the second type is for calculating the MOD for a decompression gas. And we're going to be using 1.6 ATA for that. Different certification agencies may use different ATAs uh, for different applications, but these are the numbers that we're going to be using for today. Here is the formula for calculating the working maximum operating depth in meters. Note that the fraction of O2, the FO2, is going to be a number between 0 and 1.0. It is not a percentage. So if you were using air as a bottom gas, you would not use 21% what you would use is 0.21. The other important thing is that you take the 14 and divide by the FO2 before you subtract the 10. If you do not make the calculations in that order, you will obviously receive incorrect results. Here is the working mod calculation for air. So here we have uh, 0.21 is the fraction of O2. And uh, after calculating all this out, we have a maximum working operating depth of 56.67 meters. On a side note, you should probably not dive to this depth on air, even though it is permitted with the 1.4 ATA. And this is due to the effects of narcosis. Here is the equation for calculating the deco MOD in meters. We have replaced the 14 with a 16 to account for the 1.6 ATA for decompression stops. Here we have a deco mod example with 50% oxygen. The calculated MOD is 22 meters. However, you will see the use of 21 meters for the decompression depth uh, using 50% oxygen in many places. The second type of calculation that we're going to discuss is for ideal gas mixtures. Here what we're trying to find out is what fraction of O2 or what percentage of O2 should be used for a particular depth. Here we're making the assumption that we should use 1.4 ATA uh, to minimize our decompression obligation during the working part of a dive. So what we're going to do for this calculation is we're going to take our basic working MOD formula and we're going to rearrange it and instead of solving for the MOD, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for the fraction of O2. So again, we're using the working formula for the MOD with the 14 in the numerator. Here I am rearranging the formula for solving for the fraction of O2. I'm going to break it down into two steps to make it a little more clear to see. In the first step, we're going to add 10 to both sides of the first equation. So now on the left side of the equation, we have the depth plus 10, and on the right side of the equation, we have 14 divided by the FO2. In the second step, we're moving the depth plus 10 to the denominator on the right hand side of the equation and we are moving the FO2 from the right hand side of the equation to the numerator in the left hand side of the equation. Here is our ideal gas calculation for 40 meters. So our fraction of O2 is equal to 14 divided by 50 which is 0 0.28 or 28 percent. Rather than trying to memorize this formula, it may be easier just to start with the one 
working MOD formula and derive the fraction O2 from that formula. The next calculation involves partial pressure. Here the primary thing that we're concerned about is determining if our planned gas is safe for our planned depth. Here is our formula for making the partial pressure of O2 calculation. We have the first term which is the fraction of O2 in the mix and then we're going to multiply that by the atmosphere's absolute uh, at the depth that we are going to be breathing the gas at. When we use this formula we are first going to have to calculate uh, what the ATA value is. Here's the partial pressure equation for air at 45 meters. This equation yields a partial pressure of O2 of 1.15. Since this is well below the accepted limit of 1.4 for working calculations, most agencies would consider this acceptable. The next category of calculations involve uh, determining exactly how much gas I do have in my tanks. It is obviously unsafe to start a dive with less than the amount of gas that you actually need, including your reserve. Here is the equation for determining the actual volume of gas for a specific set of tanks filled to a specific pressure. Here we have the total tank volume in liters multiplied by the pressure in bars. Here we have an example using an 11 liter aluminum twin set. This twin set is filled to 200 bar. The 11 liter twin set actually has a total volume of 22 liters. This yields an actual volume of 4,400 liters of gas. The next calculation is END. This is what is the equivalent narcotic depth for a given percentage helium mix. The presence of helium in a breathing gas mix reduces the narcotic effect of both nitrogen and oxygen. So calculating the END provides the equivalent depth if you are not diving with helium. Depending on the activity taking place, some certification agencies will specify an END between 100 and 130 feet. The formula for calculating the END in metric is the depth plus 10 times 1 minus the fraction of helium minus 10. Specific attention needs to be paid to the position of the parentheses, otherwise the equation will yield inaccurate results. For a 60 meter dive with a 30% helium mix, the equivalent narcotic depth would be 39 meters. For a non-overhead environment, non-complex dive, 30% would be considered acceptable. For a 60 meter dive with some certification agencies. So these are some of the basic calculations that you may encounter when enrolled in a technical diving course. This is not an exhaustive list of calculations that you may encounter. Some calculations, such as gas density, may be better calculated using decompression software. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. I hope you found this video helpful. And thanks for watching.